ago, we actually want to invest in the jobs of tomorrow to create jobs today. And so that is looking at, we should be the world leader in building wind turbines, yeah. solar panels. You know, Germany's leading solar making manufacturers, a Kitchener water based, Waterloo based uh, company called Arise Technologies. But actually, when it came time to build their manufacturing facilities, because they didn't get any support from the Ontario government, they actually set their facilities up in Germany, where we now have 400,000 jobs being created in the renewable energy sector. Why isn't that happening in Ontario? We need to be producing light manufacturing, we need to be producing the electric cars of tomorrow, we need to be producing biodigesters, geothermal facilities, etc., etc. That is how we're going to rebuild our manufacturing capacity and create jobs moving forward in Ontario. Energy and energy efficiency is going to be critical in the 21st century. So one of the things the Green Party is strongly advocating for is a green building fund that will create jobs today that are going to save us money tomorrow. And I'll just give you one easy example. The roof on this building, I would guess, is probably is black. It probably has a black roof. That's a standard flat roof color in Ontario. Just by converting this roof to white and converting all the black roofs in Ontario to white, so instead of absorbing heat, they'll actually reflect heat, will save Ontario an estimated $5 billion a year. Just one little simple energy retrofit solution can save that, can be leveraged into those kinds of savings. So imagine what would happen if our provincial government supported homeowners and businesses and municipalities to retrofit them, their buildings to make them more energy efficient. That's a huge job creator for our construction and trade sector and it's going to save us money over time by reducing our energy use and making us more efficient. It's those types of common sense solutions that are going to move Ontario forward and make us more competitive in the future. And then the final area I want to talk about is renewable energy. We need to harness the power of renewable energy moving this province forward. You know, in Germany and Denmark, they're up to 25% of their electricity is actually produced now using renewable energy. Ontario, it's less than 2%, so we're way behind the curve. Yet we have enough capacity in wind alone to power our entire electrical needs in this province. We just need the political will to do it, and we need to do it using community-based power. So what the Green Party's vision and what my vision is, is that everybody in this mall, I don't care if you're you know, a homeowner or a business owner or what, but everybody in this mall can be an entrepreneur producing green energy and putting it back into the grid by installing solar panels on your roof, or if you have the land capacity, putting in uh, windmills. If you're a farmer, you have to be a farmer here, uh, putting in a biodigester. And so what we need is, is we need a provincial government, we need a green government that's going to invest in smart grid technology that's going to allow each and every one of you to become an energy producing entrepreneur, not only meeting your own needs, but putting power back into the grid and making money doing it. It's going to be that kind of innovation that's going to move us forward. The second leading employer, a lot of people don't know this, there's a lot of talk about the auto sector. And we're in a food court right now, and I want you to know that the second leading employer in this province is actually the agricultural and food sector. Believe it or not, it's the second leading em employer, and it's probably the most labor-intensive component of our, of our economy. But yet, it's probably the most overlooked right now. And so the Green Party has a comprehensive plan to build local sustainable food systems to create job growth in our food sector. And if, that it's going to be fueled by the kinds of restaurants that we have here and the farmers that are literally outside of our doorstep. And I'm proud to say that Markham, of all places, Markham is leading the way. 
Mar the town of Markham City Council became the first municipality in the entire country of Canada to adopt a local sustainable procurement policy within all their municipal buildings. And I was proud to be a part of putting that together. But it's that kind of government leadership and it's that kind of um, policy that's going to drive the food sector to become probably the number one employer in this province. And we should be investing in that right now to create good, paying, sustainable jobs in our food and agricultural sector. The final thing I want to talk about is just how that links to building sustainable communities. And I think the key component of a building a sustainable community is having a vibrant small business sector, which is one of the reasons I talk so much about that. And I think the other critical component to that is having land use planning decisions that create walkable, cyclable, and transit friendly communities. And to give you a great example of that is, is we just have to walk, walk over to Unionville, downtown Unionville is a great example of a vibrant, walkable community with thriving, profitable small businesses. And I think another example of that, just to show that we're not, you know, Main Street century, is a place like this. We can't overlook the role that malls play in creating a space for community, and a space for community right here, and particularly malls that are operated by independent businesses like what we have here is another fantastic example of how we can build a community right here in a, in a suburban area where a lot of people think that that's going to be a challenge. But I see it happening right here. And the Green Party wants to support policies that empower communities, empower individuals, empower community organizations to make the decisions that affect their communities because we believe that you know what's best for your community, not, the, not, the, not necessarily the provincial government. We want to foster and facilitate your ability to make land use planning, economic and zoning decisions for your own community. And that is how we're going to build sustainable communities in this province. And the final, final benefit of doing that is a very personal benefit. Talked a bit about sort of our the big picture economy and how that relates to our community. But as we move towards a green economy anchored by sustainable communities, we as individuals are going to lead more healthy lifestyles. I think it's unconscionable in this province that one in four children now have asthma. That the leading cause of death now is preventable illnesses such as cancer and heart disease. And I think a lot of that is related to the air we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat, and the kinds of lifestyles we live. And as we move towards a greener economy, less dependent on fossil fuels, as we move towards more walkable communities, we're going to have cleaner air, cleaner water, safer food, and we're going to live healthier lifestyles. And we're all, as individuals, going to benefit from that in our own health and well-being. So thank you for coming out today. And uh, I encourage